Hi, I'm Carl Binder, CEO of the Performance Thinking Network, and I want to talk about performance consulting. What is it, and perhaps what isn't it? Now, my history in this field goes back to the 80s when I was a, became a member of the International Society for Performance Improvement, ISPI. And ISPI uh, was an organization that was founded by, and in those days especially, included some of the very early pioneers and thought leaders in this field, people like Tom Gilbert, Gary Rummler, Bob Mager, and others. And these were people who were making the transition from what they thought of or called instructional technology to what they called human performance technology, or HPT. And so there were a lot of methods and models that developed in those years, in the 80s uh, and early 90s, and uh, they became pretty powerful. Now, a few years after that, the American Society for Training and Development, which has since become the, the Association for Talent Development, essentially cloned the HPT model and made some improvements. And because they're a much better marketing organization, uh, renamed the field as Human Performance Improvement, developed certification programs and so forth. And for a few years, up until probably five or six years ago, the two likely sources of learning about performance consulting were either ISPI's HPT programs or ATD's uh, HPI programs. There were also a few other programs out there, but there weren't a lot. And we were an early player in that field, uh, really going back to the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, where we introduced our Six Boxes Practitioner Program. Since that time, however, if you go and Google uh, performance consulting, you will find pages of offerings, programs, consultants, certifications, and so forth. And if you look at an awful lot of them, they look to me like what I would call training on steroids. They are, uh, in some sense, training and development professionals, learning and development professionals, who are now more attuned to the business results that their clients seek to achieve, who can justify their interventions uh, with return on investment calculations, who can basically become part of uh, the organization's efforts to accelerate its people's performance. But the problem with that is that very often it really is people primarily who are doing training and developing skills and knowledge. And one of the things we all know is that if you train people, even if you do a super job of it, you will not get the return on your investment unless you change some of the factors that are going on in the actual workplace. Now, this is a system, and we use our six boxes model to frame that system to encompass and to look at all of those factors and how they work together. We also, before we even apply that, look at the accomplishments, to use Tom Gilbert's word, or the contributions that individuals, teams, and processes make to business results, because that's actually what we want to increase. Now, many of our clients and many of the people who go through our certification programs are learning and development professionals, individuals or whole teams, who want to make the transition to performance consulting. And so what we teach them, in short, is how to get out of the training box, how to look at all the factors that affect performance, to work with and partner with their business clients, to rearrange, redesign, configure, and optimize all the factors that support the desired performance. The ideal, of course, is this becomes an ongoing, continuous performance improvement effort, which is what happens at some organizations. So the remaining videos in this uh, short series uh, are designed to unpack some of these topics, to talk a little bit about some of the implications and how we approach them. And so what I hope you will take out of this is a, a refreshed view of what performance consulting is, what it can accomplish for an organization, and also what it is not.